My name's Margaret Strout, and we are gonna cook butternut squash today. Now, butternut squash is a great squash. It is one of the highest in vitamin C and vitamin A. It's got a whole lot of flesh in it, so it's good. You get more bang for your buck as well. When you buy one, you wanna have one that's kind of a pretty color, kind of a in-between color. You don't want a whole lot of green on it. You don't want a whole lot of brown. There will be some where it was on the ground while it was growing. Now, butternut squash has a fairly hard rind on it. So I'm going to show you first how to cut it up and peel it, and then um, I am going to um, only peel part of it because we're gonna steam it. All right, we're gonna cut the end off. Now, I find if I cut it like this, it gets harder as you get down lower. Now, because I'm gonna steam this, I want as much what they call surface area around as possible. And I'm only gonna peel one of these just to kind of give you an idea. If we don't need to peel it for this recipe. Okay, you see, there's about an eighth of an inch of rind and a little bit of the outer coating. And you wanna cut that off. And some people use a vegetable peeler. I can't, they always get real slick and I'm afraid I'm gonna cut myself. So I've come to just do this. Oops, see? And you just wanna get that little bit of green off let me see if I got a couple other spots. The white, like veins, are fine, but this is your peeling, and then you can do whatever cutting you need to do. I'm gonna throw these in my compost bucket. I think composting is almost like Christmas. And I'm gonna cut this, and I'm just, Cutting it in half. This is where the seed part is. So you can see that there's a lot of flesh here. You get more, okay? I am now, excuse my compost bucket. It works great though. I'm going to take and just scoop. Uh, this is hard to do, especially backwards. You can see it. The uh, seeds out. I like the way it smells. And I have a pan here with probably about three quarters of an inch of water in it. I'm going to steam this, but I am going to steam it with the rind down. Because if you steam it this way, it can burn a little more easily. And I'm just kind of putting it in there. I get this dug out. It smells kind of like pumpkin. It reminds me of when I was a kid, we used to do jack-o'-lanterns and such. Oh heck, you don't need to see this. <laughs> see, it just gets slick. Okay, now if you cook it this way, you can do it in the oven, you can do it in the microwave, but I think in a pot with a little bit of water is the fastest and most efficient way to do it. And you can see, I think, that I've got these sitting so they're the rind side down. And I'm going to put everything with the rind side down sim or out because I don't want it to, I don't want the flesh to burn. If it's in the oven, a little bit of the flesh will get kind of toasty, as I call it, but it will not, um, you'll have a better flavor if you do it in the oven, but I find this is faster. So for this program, we're gonna kind of do this. Also, when you have peeled it, we have a number of recipes here where we're gonna dice this up. I'm not gonna show you dicing it because you know you know how to dice, a, dice something. Um, I usually cut it this way and then I cut whatever, whatever size I want. But this is a good, um, a good piece. You can kind of get a hold of it when you're dicing. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on this. I'm gonna put it on the stove. We're gonna go to a commercial and we'll be right back.
Visit your local tailgate market and fall in love with the freshest, best tasting food around. Find your farmer at mountainmarkets.com. The WC Farmers Market is located on a 36 acre site overlooking the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains and Biltmore State. It is located in Asheville, North Carolina, which is within a two hour drive of a tremendous volume of horticultural products. There are three kinds of produce markets wholesale, retail, and farmers. The WC Farmers Market has a blend of all three. We are located in the heart of the apple and tomato production areas and close to the South Carolina peach production area. You can find the whole alphabet of fruits and vegetables at the WNC Farmers Market, from apples to zucchini, as well as mountain crafts, jams and jellies, ornamental plants, flowers, baked goods and honey. The market is a wonderful place to find farm fresh, fine ripened, and tree ripened produce at a reasonable price. WNC Farmers Market is conveniently located off Interstate 40 at exit 47 and off Interstate 26 at exit 33 in Asheville. Our address is 570 Brevard Road. Whether you are looking to stretch your food budget, entertain your friends or family, please come out and visit the market and make it a regular part of your place to shop for fresh produce. We are back and the the other squash is on the stove, and I put it on medium heat, um, and we're gonna check it from time to time, so it won't scorch or anything. Right now, we are going to make a recipe that I've made in the past for y'all, and it is a saute. Now, it has bacon in it. Um, you're putting four pieces of bacon for a, essentially a meal, so don't worry about it. It's mainly for flavoring. If you want to do oil and then add some uh, vegetarian bacon or do turkey bacon, you need the fat in the bacon to, um, that's the fat in the recipe. So a little bit won't hurt you. We just don't want you to eat a steady diet of it. But this gives you an excuse to buy some. <laughs> Now, I'm going to put that in, and I'm kind of letting some of the fat melt around in it, in the pan, and then I'm going to throw in the onions. So it's going to smell wonderful. Bacon and onions are probably one of the best smells around. I'm trying to get these little guys to separate, and they're not being very cooperative. Here, I'll use the two paddle approach, see if that works because I want to have them cook to be fairly firm and crispy. Bacon is one of those foods that it tastes so good, but it's one of those that's just not all that great for you. You could do Canadian bacon if you wanted to, but you would have to add just a tad more fat to it an oil or something, just because there is not as much fat in it. And I've got this at a good fry temperature. I'm putting in, I cut up one onion, and I didn't cut it into very small pieces. Oh, land sake, that smells good. Honest to goodness, I don't think there's a thing that smells quite as good as onions and bacon together. Okay, I'm gonna let that get a little bit, the onions kind of cook so they're done a bit. Just a second more. Oh, another little bit of bacon in here. Wait, get in there. Now, this is a butternut squash that I cut up. It is, I believe, six cups. It was more or less an entire butternut squash depending on the size that you get. And I'm gonna kind of put this in there. And we are going to saute this. Now, I did it in large chunks, not huge. Um, 
The smaller chunks you do, the more easily it will cook or the more quickly it will cook. But I am going to put the lid on this. We're going to let it cook for just a little while. And meanwhile, I'm going to show you a soup recipe. So we're going to take just a tad of a break and I'll be right back with the um, how to roast the um, butternut squash. And then we'll get right back to this. Okay, thank you. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Are you going on a big trip out of the country? Already have your passport and your bags packed? Not so fast. Have you had your travel vaccinations yet? It's recommended to get your travel vaccines four to six weeks before you leave. There are three types of vaccines for travel, routine, recommended, and required. So be sure that your family gets the correct vaccine at the proper time before your trip. Visit www.nc.cdc.gov travel to learn more about health and safety tips when traveling out of the country. And enjoy your vacation. This message brought to you by the Buncombe County Department of Health. Visit buncombecounty.org slash health or call 828-250-5000 to schedule your travel vaccination today. Okay, we're back to do the next recipe. I am stirring this from time to time. It smells wonderful. I put the lid on it to kind of get it to cook just a tad faster. This honestly is one of my favorite recipes and my son actually adores it as well. Now, I kind of made this up and then my sister helped me a bit. This is roasted butternut squash soup. And I have cut butternut squash into fairly large pieces and the onions into fairly large pieces. Now, I'm not going to measure oil. I'm just going to kind of smear this around. And I may add a little bit more because you want to have them fairly well oiled. I think your hands are one of your best tools in the kitchen. And you know, you can have one to one side and one vegetable to the other side. I do want to mention that the vast majority of the foods that we're cooking today are probably, I don't know, a good 80% wick foods. Because I do a lot of cooking with vegetables for y'all. And see, I'm kind of, you know, getting these oiled. It's not always perfect. If you want to, you can put them in a bag, a plastic bag, and kind of oil them around. This would be a fun thing for kids to do. I'm a big believer in kids in the kitchen. Little girls are more capable. Little boys make better husbands. You can always tell them that. And they're also more independent and more capable though it can be a challenge sometimes. My mother was very good about that and I, one of my early memories is I had an egg I was holding on to and uh, she tried to take it away from me. And you know, you squeeze an egg on those and it breaks, it'll crack in your hands. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my hands off and we're gonna put these in an oven that's 350 degrees. I am going to check, we are going to check it from time to time, and then we're going to mix up the soup. So let's put this in the oven, and I'll check how this other butternut squash is doing. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's getting done. I have a very um, inexact measure for it. <laughs> I uh, use my fingers. 
Now, for the magic of television, I did roast this butternut squash earlier. And so the rest of this soup, it's very easy. You put the butternut squash in a pot with the, um, some broth. And I wasn't sure what to do for seasoning, but I wanted something spicy. And for some reason, <laughs> I collected a whole bunch of Cajun seasoning. I thought, you know, that's spicy and it's very salty. So I thought, you know, I didn't add any salt to this except what's in the broth. So I add this. I'm gonna let this cook for just a minute. We're gonna stir this up and then um, we're gonna put this in the, uh, we're gonna puree this. So here it goes on the oven or on the stove and I'm putting it medium low heat. It's so much easier if you can clean up as you're working. As you can tell, these recipes don't have a large number of ingredients. We have too much to do, especially if we have kids. Oh, wow. Look at that. It smells wonderful. The butternut squash is becoming tender. Now, you may be more um, timid than I. I use my fingernail for checking doneness, but my sister says I have what, my, what she calls asbestos hands, so um, they're not totally fireproof, but they're pretty close. You wanna stir this around quite a bit. I'm gonna let it cook for just a little bit longer, and yeah, they're not quite done. I think if I, if you do this and you're in a hurry, you want to do it on, um, cut up the squash a little bit smaller because they do cook a bit faster. Alrighty, let's let that sit for just a minute. We're going to go to a commercial. Um, I do want to say the bacon in this re recipe is not a wick food as well as the herbs um, and the pepper. Or, um, but everything else is. And I've tried very hard to get all the recipes with any of these programs, mainly WIC foods. Well, they're almost ready. Probably another minute or two, and then we can add the spinach, get everything warmed up. And believe me, this stuff is good. All right, let that sit for just a bit. Go to a commercial. No family should go without medication or care because they can't afford it. With Buncombe County's free prescription card, Coast to Coast RX, you can save up to 75% of the cost of your prescriptions. You can also access discounts on dental and vision care, diabetes supplies, lab work, and more. I'm County Commission Chairman David Gant, and I encourage you to get your free prescription card at buncombecounty.org slash rxcard and start saving today. Okay, welcome back. Whew. See, this is getting nice and I don't know if you can see, they're, they're caramelizing wonderfully. You can kind of look at them and tell. They've kind of gotten, how do I describe it? I almost think fuzzy on the side, but that's not the right word. But we'll go with it. I have some frozen spinach. You can use uh, fresh spinach, but frozen spinach is less expensive. It is available on WIC, and it's fairly easy to get. Um, and people think, oh, fresh is, you know, fresher, more nutrient dense. It's really not, because when they're um, harvesting the spinach, they're gonna go right from the field and process it. The same with canned, so they're not as, um, not as bad as they used to be. The stuff isn't sitting around. I'm sprinkling about a tablespoon of thyme over this. 
You can use fresh thyme. My fresh thyme is not doing very well right now. And I've got some pepper, and I got this little grinder. It's really handy, it has a lid. And so you can grind it into the lid, and then you kind of have an idea how much you're putting in. So I'm putting, you know, a little bit more than a quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna cover this. We are going to um, puree our soup, and then we're gonna be ready with that. Now, you can puree in a food processor or a blender. And this blender is old as the hills, I'll be honest. But it still works. Now this soup is fairly low in fat, but it is high in the good kinds of fat. If you want to, you could um, leave some chunks in it, but I kind of like it to be very smooth. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but now, hmm, you have all different, you can whip, puree, crumb, chop. I think I'm going to just say, okay, put it on blend. And I'm not doing it a whole lot. I've got a little extra here. I'm gonna put this in a bowl that I'm gonna use for serving. Because I don't really want chunky. Now, as I think I said, you can use chicken broth. You can use vegetable broth. Or pretty much any kind of broth that you want. Some, if you wanna get really fancy, if you're in a restaurant or something like that, they put butter in it. You could do milk. Um, a low-fat milk would make this, you know, creamier. And that is a wick food. Oop, let's see how much of a mess I can make. Oh, it's surprising how much a bowl holds. I don't want to waste any of this good stuff. And again, I'm putting this on blend, so it's not going to be too pureed. And I'm not doing it for very long. So here we go. Oops. I'm being a messy person. Stir that around and put it in this bowl that we're using for serving. Now, you can even add cream to this if you want to. I have it textured because I kind of like it that way. You see it's, mm. this is really good with a good bread. Give me a little cheese on a cold night. Each half a cup of this is a serving of vegetables. So it's, you know, really good for you. And your kids will probably like it because it's not too, too spicy, but yet it is um, hearty and it has a little bit of a kick. And of course, you can use different herbs and spices if you want to. I just had that glut of um, butternut school or um, Cajun seasoning. Okay. Now this, the spinach has defrosted. You don't need to cook it a whole lot because spinach, you know, frozen spinach has been cooked and if you've heated it up, and this is going to sit for just a little while, so it's going to be very, very good. I'm going to unplug it. And let's see. Well, I'm going to have to get a spoon. Or I'm going to burn the daylights out of myself. And you can see it's got a good bit of color, again, wick foods. But also, for those of you who are not receiving wick, they're healthy foods. And I think that's the most important thing. And again, there is a little bit of bacon in this. But I think it was Thomas Jefferson said that meat should be a garnish. 
and that's what this is. Meat is a garnish. So there you go. It is yummy. We're gonna come back and we're gonna check on um, our butternut squash that's on the stove. And I'm also going to show you how to make a vegetable quesadilla with lots of butternut squash. Okay, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay, Max? I'll be back. How long does it take for your pet to die from heat stroke? The temperature in your car can be 120 degrees in just 10 minutes. What an avoidable, senseless tragedy. No one whose pet has died thought it would ever happen to them. Do you really want to take a chance with your pet's life? A reminder from the Animal Coalition of Buncombe County. The WC Farmer's Market is located on a 36-acre site overlooking the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains and Biltmore Estate. It is located in Asheville, North Carolina, which is within a two-hour drive of a tremendous volume of horticultural products. There are three kinds of produce markets, wholesale, retail, and farmers. The WC Farmer's Market has a blend of all three. We are located in the heart of the apple and tomato production areas and close to the South Carolina peach production area. You can find the whole alphabet of fruits and vegetables at the WNC Farmer's Market, from apples to zucchini, as well as mountain crafts, jams and jellies, ornamental plants, flowers, baked goods, and honey. The market is a wonderful place to find farm fresh, fine ripened, and tree ripened produce at a reasonable price. WNC Farmer's Market is conveniently located off Interstate 40 at exit 47 and off Interstate 26 at exit 33 in Asheville. Our address is 570 Brevard Road. Whether you are looking to stretch your food budget, entertain your friends, or family, please come out and visit the market and make it a regular part of your place to shop for fresh produce. We're going to use the um, electric skillet one more time. I have checked our butternut squash that's steaming. It's getting almost ready. So I think once we get this going, then we can um, work on that other recipe while this cooks a little bit. I want to say that each of these recipes are relatively simple. They are also you know, fast, so you don't have to spend a whole lot of time. I am going to modify a few, like the quesadilla. I'm only going to make one quesadilla at this point, so I'm going to use my toaster oven, which you can if you, you can cook this ahead and then use it for larger dinners. If you do more than one quesadilla, you probably want to put the tortillas with the cheese in an oven on a baking sheet, but just for the sake of, um, not having too many made up. I am going to put just a tad of oil. I have found if I put oil in this, it's just a little bit easier. I buy a very healthy oil. Um, you can get olive oil, you can get canola oil. I tend to use canola, I'm not a fan of olive oil. I have, in the past, I make these. I will sometimes put carrots, I will sometimes put um, summer squash. Um, peppers, onions, whatever I happen to have in the refrigerator. I, th in this, I've got onions and peppers. And we're going to put that in there. Now, depending on how many quesadillas you want to make, you probably want to have about half a cup of vegetables for each quesadilla. I'm going to let this, slot, you know, Spin it around a little bit to get it coated with oil. I put about a tablespoon of oil in here. You can measure. And I probably have about four cups of vegetables thus far. And then I'm going to add some tomatoes and some spinach. And after this gets cooking a little while, we're going to add the spices and um, the tortilla. So let me put the lid on this. And I'm going to bring over the other squash, and we're going to make the butternut squash um, kind of a puree, but it's not really a puree, it's more like a mash with Worcestershire and um, raisins. Be right back. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now, usually I make this so it's cool before I try to, pe you know, get the rind off. But, ah, doesn't want to cooperate. And you're going to get as much of the butternut squash off as you can. And it's probably better to use a pot holder to hold it. It's very easy to do this at this point. Everything's soft. The rind is very pliable. Oh, well, it's a little too pliable. Um, some of the butternut squash cooked a little faster than a, ouch, bit of it. Let's see. Well, this is not working the way I planned. I think I, because I usually do it colder, this is getting kind of warm. So I'm going to just take some of this off. Ouch. Now you want to put, you know, it's really a whole butternut squash. And I'm putting just a little bit in here because I don't want to burn my fingers anymore. I do have um, tough hands, but I don't have super tough. These are falling apart, which is a little bit more done than I generally do them. I like them just a little bit less tender because it's easier to get them out of the rind. Well, that's working a little bit better. I am going to put the rind either in the compost, and I think my puppy dogs will get some of this. They love it. It's good for them. Ouch. You're going to see it. I'm, I'm going to hurt myself today. but part of the joy of cooking, I think. Here we go. Let me let these others cool for just a minute, and I'm going to stir this up. Oh, wow. I do want to say that I cut the butternut squash in very, very small pieces here because I don't want them to be too big in the tortilla. So. And again, you can make this and keep it in the refrigerator for a while. Um, they recommend two or three days. Um, you could freeze it and bring it out. I kind of like freezing things so I have something that I can just kind of go with. Okay, now I'm going to work on this a little bit more. I think if I take these out, it's being evil. And you see the wonderful, wonderful colors. There's some really dark, dark reds almost, dark oranges. And then there's the lighter as it goes out. I think all vegetables with a rind do that. Now, as I said before, some people like to puree this, but I kind of like it to have a little bit more texture. And scooping it, if it's cool, can be kind of fun. That's not fun this way. <laughs> I'll be honest. All right, I got one more to do. Well, I think I left a little. Oh, that's another piece of rind. As I said, this got a little bit more done than I wanted it to. And I usually cook it and let it cool a bit more. But for the sake of doing this program, we didn't do that. I'm going to just kind of put those all in there. And again, our part are going to go in the compost, and my dogs are wild about this stuff. So now you can use a potato masher. I'm just going to use a fork, or maybe a little bit of a masher. Well, golly, I'm being very messy today. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put one tablespoon of butter. Oops. And it's supposed to have two tablespoons of raisins, but I'm not very good at measuring. And about a tablespoon of Worcestershire. Now, Worcestershire is an interesting sauce. And this is going to, you know, give it a little bit of a tang. The butternut squash has a sweetness to it. The Worcestershire and raisins will add the sweet. 
the butter will add the cream. Now, this one only has one ingredient that is a wick food, but you're not using a ton of others and you probably have them around. Um, Worcestershire is a wonderful addition to most foods. And the raisins complement it because there's raisins in Worcestershire sauce. Plus it's fun to say. There we go, let's put it in a nice pretty bowl. This would be a good accompaniment to a holiday dinner or just a regular winter meal. There we go. I think it's yummy. Okay, I see. Now I do have to say, when I cook this, I usually cook it in a uh, cast iron skillet on the stove. But you can use an electric skillet. You want to kind of brown these just a little bit. Now this recipe, except for your spices, is all wick foods. And I'll just kind of clear out whatever I have in the refrigerator again. I'm not going to be, you know, too fussy. If you have some, you know, some vegetables that need to be used up, this is a good way. You don't want to let them go too far, of course. But you can use up some of the vegetables that you have in your pantry or refrigerator. And again, it can be pretty much anything you want to. I find frozen and fresh vegetables tend to work a little bit better with this. It's not a uh, hard, fast rule as I'm using frozen. Um, and you can put what you prefer. I'm putting favorite vegetables in mine. Now, I'm just going to dump some tomatoes in. I don't tend to use canned tomatoes in this because they kind of, I don't know, I want them a little bit more whole. I'm going to cover this up again. And we are going to do the quesadilla part. Actually, I'm going to put the herbs on there. You can put taco seasoning. I kind of cheat that way. Or you can mix your own taco seasoning. I'll put my quesadilla on my um, uh, toaster oven. And I'm putting some cheese on it. You don't want to go too crazy or too little. I'm putting probably about a third quarter a cup. I do have a larger tortilla because again, that's what I had on hand. You would put less with the smaller tortillas. I'm going to take a second, put this in the toaster oven, and we'll be back for the combining. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative. It's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Welcome back, and I'm going to do a ta-da. Look at these wonderful vegetables. The tomatoes have kind of popped, which is kind of fun. I think as a kid, I would have enjoyed that. Of course, as an adult, I like it, but I'm half kid anyway. So what we're going to do is everything is wonderfully tender. I have my real quesadilla. I'm going to add the vegetables. I'm actually going to turn this off. And I'm going to put, depending on the size of your tortilla, you're going to put between half a cup and a quarter cup of this on. Kind of mash the tomatoes in. And again, a little bit of oil, a little bit of taco seasoning from your kitchen. You can add some hot sauce, some um, salsa, uh, some sour cream, you know, avocado, whatever you want to add. Now, here 
are, are wonderful, wonderful things we've made today. We have a quesadilla, which makes a really, really good quick lunch. And honestly, <laughs> I eat this fairly often for lunch. A wonderful side dish. A soup, which is hearty and not too, too, what they call picante, not too spicy hot. And again, you can put less of the um, Cajun seasoning, or you can use another seasoning, or even add a little milk. A 2% milk would be great in this. I probably wouldn't add more than about a cup or two. Um, you don't want it to be too creamy because it might, um, the milk might curdle a little bit. You don't want to do that. And then this wonderful um, dish that can be an entree, depending on what you are serving along with it. You could have it with a salad. You could have it with some other vegetables, a nice bread. So I hope you enjoy these recipes. They are simple. They're relatively quick. The hardest part in this is probably peeling the butternut squash which you have to be careful of. Some people like a vegetable peeler, but as I said, I'm not very good with that. It kind of frightens me. Um, so I use the knife. And um, after you've got it peeled, you're pretty much home free. Um, so enjoy these. This is Cooking for Your Health. I'm Margaret Strout. And remember, I care about you. If you want any more information about these recipes, please go to the Buncombe County website under Cooking for Your Health Recipes.